Each year, Masterton District Council supplies more than 4.4 billion litres of treated water to the people of Masterton. That's the equivalent of about 2,000 Olympic swimming pools. The water goes to a population of about 20,000 residential consumers, as well as businesses, including those in the Wainawa Industrial Estate, south of Masterton. Total daily consumption ranges from about 9 million litres a day in winter to highs in summer of up to 20 million litres. That creates a challenge. Masterton's water comes from the Wainawa River, and the highest demand often occurs when the river is at its lowest. That's why we often have water restrictions in place in summer. The availability of safe drinking water is a fundamental requirement for public health, and ensuring it's delivered to Masterton residents is one of the Council's key responsibilities. The work carried out at the Council's water treatment plant at Kaituna, 10 kilometres west of the town, is therefore extremely important. Each day, thousands of people cross the bridge over the Wainawa to the south of Masterton, but the intake for the water supply is actually about 15 kilometres upstream in the foothills of the Tararuas. And there is something a little unusual about the intake. The water is not pumped from the river, but siphon. Water, when first arrives at the treatment plant, goes into three large storage ponds. These can hold about three days' supply of water for Masterton, 20 million litres each. If the ponds are full, the water arriving from the intake is returned to the river. It is important, particularly in summer, for the health of the river to be maintained so water is not wasted. If the water arriving is particularly muddy or dirty because of flooding, for instance, it may affect water already in the storage ponds, so it's also diverted back out to the river. Keeping water in the ponds as clear as possible minimises the amount of chemicals that needs to be used during the treatment process. Discoloration caused by materials suspended in the water is called turbidity and is one of the several factors measured automatically through the treatment process. The status of ponds and tanks throughout the system and the chemical makeup of the water can be monitored automatically from a control room at the treatment plant and regular manual checks are also made. Water beginning the treatment process first has two chemicals added, polyaluminium chloride and polyelectrolyte. The polyaluminium chloride, or PAC, causes silt and clay particles suspended in the water to join together in what are called flocks. The polyelectrite creates a hard shell for the flock, stopping the particle breaking apart. The flocks drop to the bottom of the clarification chamber as sludge. The sludge is removed and left to dry before disposal to landfill. The next step in the treatment process is a system of five sand filters to leave the water as clear as possible and removes any remaining flock particles. Filters are backwashed daily to take out material trapped by the sand. Chlorine, fluoride and lime are added to the filtered water which goes onto a covered clear water tank. It takes more than 30 minutes for the water to pass through the tank, allowing time for the chlorine to do its job. Chlorine acts as a disinfectant to kill any disease causing microorganisms in the water. This is done to meet drinking water standards and provide safe water. It is also important that there is a residual amount of chlorine in the water to ensure it remains safe as it passes through the mains network. Elected members of the Masterton District Council have also decided that fluoride should be added to prevent tooth decay in children. And lime is added to increase the pH of the water, reducing its acidity and making corrosion of pipes less likely. It's easy to take water for granted when you can just turn on a tap to get it. But each cupful has travelled a long way from the Wainawa River to reach that tap and received a lot of care and attention on the way. It pays not to waste it.